How do you write intelligently about a film that reaches the twin peaks of superficial idiocy and formal brilliance at the same time? Do you tell its story? Do you point out its methodology? And will anything you say simply ruin the experience for anyone who hasn't seen it? No matter how many classes I taught, I never found a way to include Zazie dans le Metro in any reasonable discussion. So I assigned it, then forbade anyone to discuss it. But this is my journal, for my eyes only, so I can say what I want. I can say that the child at the heart of the picture is the purest representation of Odysseus that art or literature has ever reproduced, and no one can argue with me. She is what Joyce had hoped to accomplish in his Bloom Daedalus epics. She is what Cousin Zacchaeus forgot in his. Odysseus is chiefly a mischief maker in the body of a warrior, which is basically a male version of this film's small heroine. Zazie's odyssey began the instant she stepped off the train and into the loving arms of her uncle, whom she had never met before. The ease with which she snuggles up to him beguiles the viewer, her questions beginning almost immediately, speaking with him as if he's visited every summer since she was born. Perhaps it's because she recognizes that her uncle is as much of a child as she is, a singular case of the adult child that likely represents the majority of humans on the planet. He's essentially Oscar Wilde with neither the audience nor the practice. Zazie's precocious chatter amuses and disturbs. As the father of seven bumbling idiots, I can scientifically attest to the surprising words of children ages 2 through 10. Much past that, they lose their originality, as considerations outside themselves suddenly thrust inward on their perfect minds. She amuses us because she surprises us, and she disturbs us because she asks the questions we most often consider in grave tones of grown-up seriousness. She swears, she's casual when talking about violence or sex, and she has that look in her eye that most of us never attain. Utter comfort with the strange world around us. This girl is the perfect human that we all hope to become. Capable of living frantically, seeing the possibility of joy in every situation, and happy to fall asleep at the table when she's tired. The fact that she falls asleep at the very moment that all of the adults come together in a fever dream of idiotic activity scolds us. She knows better than to pay attention to adults play acting a serious farce about the concerns of adults. Marriage, revolution, conquest, acumen, these things concern the world of fools, not the world of children. Whether deliberate on Louis Maul's part or not, this is Odysseus cleansing his house of the suitors. But the child must use the only weapon she has available, her brain. The style of the film is decidedly nouveau vague, but it's more than that. The French New Wave is a toy box, and the boys and girls who riffle through its contents make intentional decisions that are supposed to have an effect. Anything that happens in a Godard movie not only feels contrived, it is announced as contrivance. Truffaut's style gentles up the Godardian intellectualism, and just barely escapes into a romantic mawkishness that either enchants or dismembers. But Louis Malle's contrivances in Zazie are pure zaniness. An extended sequence pulled out of the Looney Tunes outdoes the great vaudevillian movie stars of the 20s and 30s. The only trope missing during the extended chase scene is when Wile E. Coyote runs off a cliff but doesn't fall until he notices his error. Morazzini excesses Exaltus as Uncle Gabriel ascends the Eiffel Tower in serious tones, an angel pursued by sirens who annoy more than arouse. Higher and higher, all while Zazie and the cab driver discuss what it means to love, to be a child, to be a child aware of love. Both the cab driver and the uncle seem to be driven almost to madness, which is just annoyance pushed to its extremes. Such interiority is the stuff of big people, and Zazie will have none of it. Maybe that's a peculiarly French response to French intellect and joie de vie. Or maybe it's universal. Maybe we all feel that way. Whatever it is, we can't evade the hints as they fly from all sides. Zazie is better at being a human being at age 10 than we will ever be at 30, 40, 50, or 60. Not until we reach the doddering old age of 90 or 100 will we return to the liberated insanity that is life's most precious gift. Zazie's last words echo with Odysseus as well. I grew up some. Once a wily kid, always a wily kid. Maybe I should have let my students talk about this movie, but it's hard to trust adults to talk about anything, let alone sacred texts. It just scares me. For camera work that stuns, for editing that gives the French New Wave an excuse to exist, for music that feels oh so right, and for performances that nail every caricature to a board of humanity that made Bunuel wet his pants, I give this film the seven heads of my seven children, in the hopes that their collective imaginations can amount to one Zazie. Their bodies can age into worthlessness with the rest of us.